education they say is right skill or knowledge is gained when you put your heart into it and you don't necessarily have to be in the four walls of a building to get an education in the past it used to be a thing of pride and joy to get quality education but nowadays you find out a lot of young people are no longer interested in getting an education what changed so many questions yet no answers or very few answers like i always say i welcome you guys to another interesting episode of public announcements and as usual i'm your host gifts david and today we're going to be talking about the educational sector and the rapid declining in the sector what is going on we're going to get all of those answers right after this break when my guest joins in i'll be right back all right, all right. it's made kuti and I just want to inform all of you and to say... Vote, not fight. Election will be war. Come out and vote. It's your right. It's your responsibility. Because that's the single most important thing you can do to affect the outcomes. Don't stay at home. Make sure you come out and make sure you vote. This time, we need to do it and do it right. It's your civic responsibility to choose your leaders. Vote. 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 Not fight. Because election will be war. All right, welcome back to Public Announcements. For those of you who just joined in, today we are talking about the educational sector and why the sector is rapidly declining. My name is Gift David, and of course, my guest has already joined me right now, sitting very comfortably on my couch, ready to dissect today's topic. He's a Nigerian DJ and entrepreneur and an entertainer. His name is Patrick Imoyose, but you and I know him as DJ Neptune, greatness. <laughs> Very important that I had this point. How are you doing today, DJ Neptune? Thumbs up for adding greatness. I'm doing great. How are you? I can see that I'm doing fine. Also nice. I can see you don't you don't look like any of the problems have or disturbing some of us in Nigeria. Ah, there is a problem where they finish. <laughs> Try to enjoy. So this is me trying to enjoy my life. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so there's this question I always ask everyone that comes on the show. I mean, this is me being, you know, um, particular about your well-being. Okay. So how are you coping in this current situation of Nigeria? Oof. It's crazy. Right. There's a lot of issues. I don't know for how long we're going to keep complaining. Mm. But it's actually getting worse and worse on a daily basis because I'm driving out of my house now. Yeah, the road seems free, which is a bit okay. Mm -hmm. But then people are like queued up at gas stations, gas station. trying to get gas. People are trying to get to work. Mm -hmm. Cost of living is increasing on a daily basis and the income is not increasing. So it doesn't match, it doesn't add up. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy. Right. It's crazy. I mean, that's deep breath for me. I know. It's crazy. Okay, so as a creative, how are you? affected most especially with what is happening as a creative like mention some of the things that you're dealing with as a creative you know in your job as an entertainer and um how you're trying to you know find your way around it and speak on behalf of all the creatives as well um okay so for myself it, it is crazy because um year in year out i know like the amount of bookings i would do like the places i would go perform out within the country right. but now because of the level of the insecurity, insecurity. issues like brands are scared to do like events with large gatherings mm -hmm. um even if it's not large gathering like the cost of putting these things together now is crazy you know and then when you call me up and i tell you my fee my is fee. xyz six mm -hmm. figures and you're like ah in this economy <laughs> uncle it can't work oh please mm -hmm. how can we make it happen you know it's it's crazy and for me to keep the brand in business and all that you need to spend money yeah. so it's like you're spending more and not you're, getting you're not much. getting as much as you would you would get and all of this just boils down to some certain people in particular positions not doing the right things the, the, need, the needful things that needs to be needs done to be like done. we just i don't know it's it's, it's 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 getting worse it's quite sad i mean a, a nation is supposed to protect us and have our best interests. Now we're protecting we're ourselves. We're protecting we ourselves. We are protecting ourselves. We're trying to protect the image of the country because it is worse. Yeah. But when entertainers like myself go out there to put smiles on people's face, mm -hmm. regardless of whatever continent or country we meet ourselves, there's always that pride that, oh, I'm Nigerian. Right. You know, but the moment you land that airport and they open the aircraft, <laughs> you're back to, I don't want to call names, but. Mm. So help us God. Yeah. At this point. Okay, so to today's topic, we are talking education. Oh. So first, I'm going to ask you, of course, I know not so many universities teach disc jockeying. So we don't go to school to be DJs. Yeah, yeah. So what did you study? 
And what led you to becoming a DJ today? <laughs> As I studied public administration. <laughs> so it should be my seat. I know. <laughs> <Completely> opposite. <laughs> but you know how, like, for me, DJing, it wasn't even DJing at first. I wanted to become an artist. Oh, you know, but while okay. growing up, um, my, my parents didn't really understand the whole dynamics. So oh, my dad them. was like, no way, not under my roof. You have to be an engineer like me. Oh, wow. You know, and you know, like the like their generation how mm-hmm, they mm-hmm. Feel, which is, is good you know education is key you know but i mean it's crazy because in our environment in our society you go to school you 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 spend your money to acquire the knowledge you're fit and ready to work and we know the employ- the unemployment um level you know so yeah. it's now like okay you know what go to school acquire that knowledge but still have something that you can hold on to while mm-hmm. you're waiting to be employed and that right. can at least put food on your table as long as it's something legal, not trying to get involved in the illegal stuff. Right. It's insane, but I mean, you know, Nigerians were very resilient. Like, our level of tolerance is, is crazy. We know? always find a way. Like, we, you know, we always find a just... balance. Like, now, the price mm-hmm. of crude oil, like, it now seems like we're adjusting to it, mm-hmm. which it should not be. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. Right. You know, but i'm hoping things will get better yeah, yeah i'm hoping <laughs> hopefully so what do you think about the educational sector generally i mean we all have different opinions about the sector some people oh of course messing after sliced bread but some other people is like the worst thing that can happen to any child so what do you think about the educational system in nigeria um the educational system in nigeria i mean i don't think it is where it should be 100 percent okay. first the environment is not really that conducive Mm. you know and the way the brain functions sometimes like you just want to be in like a proper environment where you know it's a learning Good environment learning. not you're trying to learn and then there's even no seats for you to sit hmm. or the board is just anyhow or to even get to your learning place or your learning room or your institution it's you're caught up in traffic mm-hmm. for scarcity right. you know, so all of this combined together makes it like almost impossible for you to want to acquire that knowledge, that knowledge you know so and then obviously the strike oh. you know you're going in for a four or five year course you end up spending eight nine years because some certain people in some certain position don't want to do the needful and then they forget that they also went through that so, whole um mm-hmm. main you know so it's it's i think i would call it selfishness it's wickedness mm. you know because if you say these are the, the leaders of tomorrow <laughs> and you're not giving them or rather, let me say, you're not giving them what they need to equip themselves. Right. So, so how are you going to be leaders of tomorrow? Hmm. Okay. How are you going to take over from where you literally dropped to the country? Right. Yeah, so, I mean, hmm. we'll I rant, 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 I love that part where he said, I mean, now I'm saying we are the leaders of tomorrow, but they were not equipped, no, no. adequately equipped, yeah. you know, to be leaders. I mean, what is a leader without an education? I mean, it's, it's, it's quite sad. So now, would you blame any young adult or any child who says today, I don't want to go to school? Why? Because once I go to school, looking at the economy, oh, daddy is at home with his BSc or PhD and he doesn't have a job. Or I have a brother who has all the certifications and he has no job. So now, would you blame any child or any adult that, or any youth rather, let me use the word adult, a youth that is totally uninterested in education? So the only good thing you can do to yourself as an individual is equip yourself with as much knowledge as possible. Because regardless of where, wherever you find yourself in the future, mm-hmm. you would need it. Okay. You know, so don't relax and be like, oh, where I'm from or in this part of the country, if I end up going to school, acquiring all the knowledge I graduate, there's really nothing to do, nothing with, to it. do with it. You mm-hmm. know, where yeah, there's that. But then what if the narrative now changes? Then you're stuck. You know, so you want to do the needful as mm-hmm. long as you have the resources available for you to acquire the knowledge and then use that to equip yourself. And if it's not happening for you here, yeah, people are japping, you jap and you use it. <laughs> <laughs> it still comes in play. So it's very important to get an education. Yeah, you need it. Right. And if, you need if it's it. not for this country, at least you yeah. might use it someplace else where you exactly. find yourself. Okay. So what do you think the major problem we're facing in this sector is? Everybody has problems in one, I mean, in, in the industry, I'm going to come to that. The major problems you guys are facing, but in this sector called the educational sector, like every year there's one grant they go into that sector, there's one money going to that sector until today, we're facing even worse problems than yeah. we faced in the past. So what do you think the major problem is in this sector? 
The major problem is people being wicked. People not doing what they ought to do. That's just it. That's I mean there's no other way to there's no better way to tell it. Hmm. You get me like okay, yes, you are minister for then mm. do do what needs to be done. If you feel things are not going right, try and clear it. If you need the presidency to come involved, like let there be transparency. But people go into this position with the mindset of let me clear what I can clear. Mm. But listen, there is a lot of karma. It might not hit you, it might not hit your next generation. It somehow it's going to come back to you. Right. You know, I mean, we've seen this thing happen to some people. Who have, I don't understand mentioning names, you know, but be yes. wise. <laughs> okay. All right. So, what kind of solutions do you think we can prefer to this, we can offer to this sector as individuals? Because at this point, the government would have one story or the other to tell us. The lecturers, of course, will always have an excuse. The educational body would have an excuse. So as individuals, as students, as youth, who would like to get an education? What kind of solution do you think we can offer to these people to better the sector? Okay, so for every problem in, in life, there is always a solution. Definitely. Maybe not 100%. Okay. So now, the most important thing right now should be identifying the faults. What the exactly fault. is going on? Why do lecturers keep going on strike we've heard oh the government has refused to pay government why are you not paying people are paying taxes where are this money going to hmm. so let's identify with that okay. and then now start changing the so like the narrative so we can get the proper solution because mr lambda will come today and say they are owing me salary hmm. mr femi will come tomorrow and say i just paid xyz mm. and then mr labada will come back tomorrow and say oh money was not paid mm -hmm. you know so we need that transparency like transparency pub like publish these things in the public let's know where the problems are mm -hmm. okay. right and then let's now start looking for solutions, solutions. to this problem i think mm -hmm. that should be the first because you're not going to try to solve something when you've not gotten to the bottom part of it to know what the actual problem is right. you will still be in the same space and i think that's what has probably been happening over the years of course for every action there's a reaction right there's a ripple effect to whatever it is that one is you know dealing with so as we're dealing with this educational problems in nigeria now now how do you think this is affecting nigeria as a whole it's glaring it's it's there people are affected because i mean kids who are supposed to be in school acquiring knowledge mm. they're back at home their years of rounding up school is being extended mm. and sometimes as individuals we deal with things differently some of them don't know how to handle that mm. depression sets in depression you mm. now start thinking of okay is it really worth it maybe mm. i should do what i see xyz doing, doing and just live my life of that which is really not the best you and know so, cyber crime exactly you know so like everyone is affected it's a sad situation it shouldn't even be a problem of any country like that should be primary like after like health the health sector right. education right you know, like mm. those are like the prime important things so like i feel like a lot of our leaders i'm sorry to say is just misplaced priority like everyone right. is just working for their pockets mm. yeah we can send our kids abroad but hey like i said earlier there is law of karma you know so it's just a matter of time no matter how wealthy you think you are these things are not going to last forever you're going to go one day you right. know so what legacy are you leaving oh when mr shino was this was what he did that's what's mm. going to like your kids and their generation can live off that legacy but right. if you're not doing the right thing and you think oh you're just like i said it's it's pure wickedness pure wickedness okay yeah. now there's another general question i always ask my guests okay. now the elections are very very close and nigerians are clamoring for a change they want to elect the right leaders now everybody have different needs and desires yeah. that they want to see once a new person has been elected right so you as an individual what do you want to see nigeria become i mean they say nigeria is the giant of africa i think okay. that's years back okay you know i would want to see the government take the issue of insecurity very very like serious serious because i mean nigeria is beautiful there are a lot yes. of places in Nigeria that can attract tourism mm. and what that does it it, it helps uh, improve our economy mm -hmm. you know but I'm not the same person would want to get on the plane and say I'm going to Nigeria your friends around you say to go and do what mm. you, do you want to go get kidnapped, kidnapped. or you mm. want to go get killed you know but we have all these amazing 
places is it Obudu Ranch Resort or is it some mm-hmm. like some place in the north? Like beautiful places that can attract tourism, create more revenue, but insecurity, put that mm-hmm. in place, let people know that they can go about their business and sometimes even forget to lock their store and come back tomorrow morning and meet their that kids there. Mm-hmm. You know, like put all these things in place, it will reduce the crime rate when you mm-hmm. know okay, they are actual proper cameras, not the fashion cameras you put around <laughs> saying fashion like cameras. those way you can tackle these things mm-hmm. you get me and then also work on how you can actually get a proper equipped database in the sense Data. that if anyone commits a crime boom you can get them easily mm-hmm. you know and like there are a lot of things to put in place education as we've been speaking earlier on. but for me um i think i'm big on security because i want to be able to get a booking somewhere in bono right. and i'm not scared that when i fly into uh Bono State and I'm going um on a road trip, I might get you seem, you seem to be very particular about this insecurity. Now tell me how have you been personally affected by insecurity and what do you have to say about this ongoing matter? Because it looks like this is happening. We know it's happening, but we're not doing anything about it. Like for me as an individual, like I'm very paranoid when it comes to my security. Like it's so crazy that around my house, like I make sure I have like two four seven cameras. So anywhere I am in the world, I see what's see. going on instantly and then I can mm-hmm. alarm wherever i need to alarm to go check you know that's me as an individual so imagine if the government now sits down and say these things are possible it is i mean they travel abroad for god's sake they see these things so why can't you come back and implement these things and make our life easy and better you know if you have that out of the way then i know okay i'm not thinking about people trying to rob me i'm thinking about how i can make money to feed my family Mm -hmm. you know you're thinking about how to make money to feed your family you're thinking about not getting robbed on your way home after making that little money. <laughs> it's crazy, man. Well, we I'm can go on and on and on, but it's while well, I'm going to finish right. with it, it's insane. Hmm. Okay, thank you so much for sharing that. And I'm sure our viewers at home have learned one or two things. We all want to see a good Nigeria. So finally, what advice do you have for the youth at all? The election is very close. What do you have to say to the viewers at home on this election? All right, so it's a very, very dicey moment. And I feel like we have the power to decide on what we want. I'm not here to say vote for A, vote for B, but go with your mind. I mean, mm. if you're not suffering this whole thing that is happening, then I don't know what else could possibly push you to not doing the right thing. I think. You get me? So just go out there, exercise your rights, forget the fact that, oh, you might get rigged, I'm not going home, I'm not going out, out right, right to, to vote, vote. Mm. or there'll be a lot of chaos. Yes, we understand, and it still boils down to the insecurity. I get that, you know, but let's play our own part and then be hopeful that Nigeria will be great. Because I, I believe in this country. I do. I you believe do. in Nigeria. Like, it's a wonderful place to be in, enjoy your money, have fun, and mm. live life. Okay, you heard it, have fun and live life. Now, if you want to secure, if you want security restored back to the country, you need to go out there and vote for the right leaders, exercise your civic rights, not be in your house with your PVCs as another identity card. No, it is for you to go out there and vote for the right leaders so you can have the perfect educational sector and everything else in Nigeria can be in place. And Nigeria will be the best place for you to be in. At this point, we get to wrap it up on public announcements. My name is Rose Gitz David, and of course, DJ Neptune, the greatest. Bye-bye. Are you with me? And you shared so much insight on today's topic. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. Hopefully, we get to see you back on the show very soon. <laughs> thank you have so Definitely. much <laughs> to say. And anyway, we'll see you guys on the next episode. Have a beautiful day for now. Ara, ara. It's Made Kuti. And I just want to inform all of you and to say... Vote. Not fight. Election will be war. Come out and vote. It's your right. It's your responsibility. Because that's the single most important thing you can do to affect the outcomes. Don't stay at home. Make sure you come out and make sure you vote. This time, we need to do it and do it right. It's your civic responsibility to choose your leaders. Vote. 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 Not fight. Because election will be war.